On March 31, 2019, the Canadian Women's Hockey League ceased operation, prompting a massive discussion around what professional women's hockey should look like in North America. Players and staff are shocked after the Canadian Women's Hockey League announces it's done as of May 1st. Two organizations have led that conversation, the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association and the Premier Hockey Federation. So what does women's professional hockey in North America look like now and in the future? Can there be two leagues? And with so much momentum in the professional women's sporting landscape, is that even the question we should be asking? This is In Conversation with Reagan Carey, Erica Ayella, and Jaina Hefford. Let's start with March 31st, 2019. Thoughts and memories on that day. That was the day that the CWHL officially shut down. Um, it was obviously a long time coming. Um, you know, it's not something that happens overnight, but uh, it was definitely one of the most difficult messages I've had to deliver. I think we realize that under this model, we can't advance the women's game to the degree that it deserves. What is the model and why isn't it working? I don't think we have an answer to that. Even in that moment, I believed that there was more to come and there was better to come, but it was a realization that we couldn't keep doing that. And that when you don't get the business model right, it's not going to be sustainable over the long term. There's a, a tremendous amount of effort and um, advancements made by the CWHL. Um, so in that sense, it was it was hard to watch. Uh, but at the same time, I think by doing so, you know, they might have served their purpose in the uh, women's hockey journey. So there's been a lot of progress, of course, for the PWHPA. What are you most proud of? Um, what these players have done is is pretty remarkable and it's incredibly powerful. Um, they've spent three years together believing that there's more, believing that there's better, not settling for what currently exists, um, you know, hearing the negativity, but believing in the possibilities. We've seen growth in sponsorship. We've seen growth in fans. We've seen growth in brands. We signed a deal with Secret and P&G, a $1 million commitment. That was huge. Uh, it was the biggest commitment uh, to women's hockey, I believe, at the time. And I think the fact that they, the players have stuck together through this and, quite frankly, invested in what's coming next is something that I'm so proud to be a part of. There's still a significant amount of athletes associated with the PWHPA, top Olympians, top players that are not playing in the PHF. So what are you doing to lessen the gap there? Yeah, I think, you know, what we have to do is stay focused, just like a hockey game. You can't get distracted by things you can't control. Uh, my, my job is to build the most uh, thriving, most sustainable hockey league we can and the best home for women's uh, hockey players. And I think, you know, with the lineup of particularly in our hockey ops and league ops department, you know, you've got Belle Davidson. Nobody uh, has won more and done more to create uh, winning programs than she has. And uh um, you've got Casey Bellamy and Brianna Decker now that we just announced, uh, and Lisa Haley. I think, you know, our job is is to uh, do the work and to, to make it better every day. And then, you know, I, I have uh, faith in what the future of the, the women's landscape will look like. And uh, there's just too many great people for it to, to not succeed. The changing of the name from the National Women's Hockey League to the Premier Hockey Federation and now with Reagan Carey, I think those are all also steps in the right direction. We're starting to see investment. The salary cap has increased. We're seeing expansion for the Premier Hockey Federation. We They just announced this week that they have a deal now with ESPN for streaming. And so um, those are just a few of the things that I think have been huge for women's ice hockey. So the big question, which I don't even like asking because I actually think it's a little bit rooted in misogyny, we're not asking this question of other men's leagues. Can there be two leagues in women's professional hockey in North America? Yes, I've always thought that. Uh, there's all kinds of different formats for all kinds of different men's sports. And I think Athletes Unlimited is also showing us what it can look like to innovate on the women's sports side of things. The collective we of women's hockey, we get trapped into this conversation of um, what 
is going to be the 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 one league that uh, that remains and and withstands. And I do think some of that comes from the proximity of what we see in the National Hockey League and men's ice hockey. But again, if we take a look at the history of even what we know as the National Hockey League, we know that there were other options out there before we got the NHL. And I think we're in such an innovative market and there's so many different ways and touch points that people engage in sports and with athletes that I just don't see why we can't have um, as many viable and sustainable versions of women's ice hockey as possible. We strongly believe as a PA that a professional league should be six teams, the best 150 players around the world. Um, but we're not in the business of taking opportunities away from women. So do I think they can exist? Absolutely. We need more and more places for women to play, but we have to get it right at the top. We have to have a league at the top that um, supports the best women in the world with the infrastructure, the resources, the business model that is going to allow for a league to thrive. Um, the last thing I want is for a bunch of women to have to come together and form one league and then some of them have nowhere to play. That's not our mandate. Our mandate is to grow the sport, grow the game. And I think once you get it right at the top, everything else will, will filter itself down and we'll be stronger because of it. The landscape and just the journey will continue to evolve. And I think we need to follow, follow that. And you know, our responsibilities as leaders in the sport is to do the best we can to make sure we're, we're getting there and uh, contributing positively each day to it. Um, so as you see the growth of, you know, just U Sport and NCAA, there's a lot of great talent and it's deep and the numbers are growing. And so, you know, to have opportunities in different ways and fashions for women's hockey, I think we've proven that there's an opportunity to do that. It's been existing for a long time in our sport. So much has happened in the women's hockey landscape in such a short amount of time. So what are your hopes for the future of this sport? Oh, well, I think it has so many different opportunities, but I know it's going to be strong. I know it's going to be a contender in the women's pro sports landscape. And uh, it's just exciting to know that what happened, what it looked like four years ago and four years before that was, you know, just so different. So what it's going to look like in another four years, who knows? But I know it's going to be better, brighter and uh, stronger. Well, we've invested in in what the next step could be in a full full business model. Um, we don't believe that that sort of work has ever been done for women's hockey. I'm so encouraged and energized by the success of other women's sports, and I think we all know that um, you know the the rising boat theme that when one does well, it's contagious and it, it filters over to other sports. We know we're a few years behind potentially where they are, but there's a lot we can learn from them and there's no doubt there's a market out there. When I look at the, uh, the following that some of our athletes have, um, you know, Sarah Nurse is all over the news, the first ever woman on the cover of EA Sports. Uh, so women's hockey is, is coming, it's, it's big, there's a demand out there. And so just excited for what's to come. The level of play continues to increase. And that is ultimately the most important thing in my mind, I'm still a little bit of a, a purist, <laughs> I think, as the entertainment value around everything else outside of the ice um, continues to escalate. You still need a solid product. We, there's options, there's autonomy for athletes who want to make this a career and can now, as these leagues start paying um, and getting that investment, they can make choices that are best for not just them financially, but best for their hockey career. And that's really exciting.